Hi, welcome guys. I'm here back at Audio Tech. I've got my friend here, Ed, who's managed to uh, build a brilliant sim rig here. Um, all custom parts, he's, in, he's bought it and started it from scratch. Um, we're going to just talk you through it all now and what he's done and how he's built this rig, the equipment used, and just, yeah, just a walkthrough basically. So let's yeah. spin you around and show you the rig and uh, we'll get you started. So here you go, guys. Here you can see it all. So, I mean, this is all custom. He's bought all these bits. He'll talk you through it now. But just to give you a quick shot at it. We're running a Zeta Corsa here, just in the background. So yeah, again, welcome Ed. And here okay. we go. So he's gonna have a talk through. So basically I built this rig from scratch. I mean, um, first word of advice for anyone who's gonna be doing anything like this, actually invest in getting a proper sturdy aluminium frame first. I mean, I, I kind of went backwards. I actually bought like the PC and all the screens and then worked my way back to the actual rig itself. Um, <clears throat> the rig that I actually had to start with it was just a cheap one from Halfords. It was like about 140 quid, something like that. It's only really for sort of sitting in your lounge, playing the PlayStation, a bit of Gran Turismo. But then obviously got completely hooked and addicted to doing sim uh, sim racing. So I've just started to build a rig, basically. Um, so they basically the monitors are just mounted. They're actually like TV monitors. Um, so you've got one one side, one the other, and one at the back. Um, the only issues I had with this, obviously, them being two different styles, um, is that obviously getting the monitors to line up um, was a little bit of a pain in the bum and they're not exactly perfect they're you know within a few mil here and there it's not bad but I, I would rather have it you know a bit tighter myself but like I said I sort of started with the PC and the screens and worked my way backwards so were you saying um, Ed that something about maybe next time or when you're giving some advice to some people you'd say yeah. maybe to get the H-frame sort of stands well no 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 basically if you're going to if you're going to go for this and do like a triple monitor setup, I mean, obviously I've gone all out. We've got like a hood on here. We've got surround lighting, which I'll chat about and everything. But I would invest any 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 money that you had to start with. I would invest on the actual rig itself and use your money for that, and then upgrade the PC and the monitors and go that way with it and the yeah. steering wheel and everything yeah. because you really want it to be solid. Because the other problem that I've got is is because the actual rig it's just like a freestanding rig. It, it, it hasn't even got the sort of like the H frames and all the, 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 the bars that in place where they should be. Um, it's all a little bit flimsy. We've shored it up. Um, we've actually got um, uh, sort of cork and things like that to hold the motor up and stuff. So it's... <laughs> yeah, we've got little like, bits. Look, I mean, I've, I've got a bit of cork there. A nice bit of cork there. Just, just holding... Push, the... push the monitor forward yeah. enough. And then there's one under your... Under the actual steering wheel. Somewhere. We because... Down here. Yeah, just under there. Because... The uh, motor is so heavy, the rig is not made for it. So we've had to put a bit of cork in there just to sort of jam it in between the two to stop it from moving too much. Yeah. So like I said, first word of advice, 100% get an aluminium frame, spend the money on that first, and then upgrade you know, your steering wheel and then into screens and the power of the PC and everything. So if you start, start with the PC, got that from PC World. Um, it's a Vortex um, SXX, I believe, PC. It's running a GTX 3080 with 16 gig of RAM. It's a 11700 processor and i5, uh, 11th generation, um, eight cores, 16 logical cores. Um, really sorry, yeah, just stop you there. i7, isn't it? i7. Sorry, i7, oh, guys. Sorry, yeah, i7. Sorry, yeah, sorry, i7. Sorry, i7, i7. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, the reason why I obviously went for a PC like that is because if you want to run triple monitors, and you want to run it at the highest resolution you can, and you are obviously you want to be hitting sort of 80, 90 frames a second, you're going to need a bit of a powerhouse to do that. But like I said before, upgrade, invest in the rig being solid first, and then sort of do the PC, but I kind of did it backwards, but anyway. Because anyway. you can always upgrade, I suppose, the graphic card and stuff. You can always upgrade that, but the rig is the most important yeah. thing. I mean, I've made it as solid as I can. Obviously, this was only my first attempt at doing this, so the second time round will be completely different because I've learned loads by doing this. <laughs> Could you run us just through what screens you're running in here? So the screens, they are um, Samsung uh, G5 Odyssey 27 inch curved monitors. So we've got three of them. Um, what else have we got? So uh, other stuff that I bought obviously was the uh, Logitech here, the Z906 5.1 surround sound system. So we've got the two satellite speakers sitting at the back here. I've actually um, put one under that monitor, one on the right side, so one on the left side under that monitor, one on the right side on that monitor, and as you can see, there's a lot of gaffer tape on there. And there's, <laughs> there's a sub down the back there. And, there's the sub and, the and you've got one in the footwell there, haven't you? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And then so I put, under this, yeah. And I put the center one down there and crank the volume up on that one. 
and then you've got the two running the side and then the back so that you get like a, you know obviously 5.1 surround sound which system. is fantastic well, inside <laughs> yeah which is great when you're actually racing because you really get the sort of feeling of the sort of 3d audio going around you it's really cool um like i said again um you know, obviously there are mounting points on these, but there's nothing to mount them to the monitors. If you had an actual proper rig, you could probably mount them to the rig. And I've literally just gaffer taped them on there. <laughs> <laughs> and you've used Velcro in some points, haven't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, just basically Velcro, gaffer tape, anything I could, I could do to get them to stay on. And then obviously, you know, when the, when, when the whole thing runs through a heat cycle, the glue might get a bit loose, you've got to put more on them on. But I think I've got it to a point now where it actually is sort of solid, which is good. Um, these well, play lights are good as well. I want to talk about the lighting system. Yeah. So these are basically Philips Hue Ambi lights. So basically we've got three sets running. So I've got I've got the play on the left there to do all light, like natural daylight coming in from the left hand side uh, of the cockpit. Then I've got this one on the right here to do all the right light coming in from there. And then this one which gives you all the sort of uh, the rest of it to fill it in so you kind of got surround lighting and did you you set that up to the dashboard on the car haven't you sort of yeah so that it pulls so out the light from the game it's very very easy um once you actually buy these you just download the app and within the app you can position the light where the light is shown from the monitor so i did this one as as the center just up from the center of the monitor so it picks up all the light from the front of the driver which then lights up the cockpit realistically it's quite cool at night because you get all the lights going down the pit lane or if you get the sun setting if you're racing like sort of into night into dusk and that it's very very cool um, and then during the day obviously it picks up all the shadows and that and then you can then connect obviously these two lights left and right and set that one to the left side of the monitors this one to the right side of the monitors and where it's very cool is, is if you've got like a sort of even during the day you have like a bright track going down the sort of home straight and it's all quite open so it feels like daylight coming in and then as you go into a, maybe a treed area or an area where there's more shadows all the cockpit goes dark and dark yeah, and you can see the lights and stuff, yeah. and stuff and you yeah. can see you can feel the shadows going over yeah. you it's very 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 but very you've cool. only just added those haven't you because you were running this back one for a while weren't you yeah. with the center yeah i was running this back one in the center and then one other thing which is quite important as well is this is actually the uh, it's the two meter outdoor strip this one um, and the, no, reason, right, the yeah. reason why we picked the outdoor strip is because you see this, this, this light diffuser on the front of it. So it diffuses the light and it acts more like natural daylight rather than a, a harsh LED. Um, so you get a more diffused light so it's more realistic. Yeah, you don't have the actual LEDs like, for instance, if you look at those on there. If you they're not look like at the that, LEDs on there. Or the LEDs that are they're on. They're sharp. Yeah. These, which Ed will talk about which a bit. The flag spotters. And there's the other speaker. Sorry, guys, I didn't there's, show you them before. There's, there's one that, that side. There. And then there's one that, that side. side of the rig as well. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, you get so you've got 5.1 surround sound, and then you've got you know surround lighting of you know of of, of a type, which is quite cool, and it, that works really well. It really, really, really does. Um, another thing to talk about is the side nettings, <laughs> yeah, which is really cool. The, yeah, the race nettings. Um, I've literally just bungeed them to the back of the monitors, and then look more gaffer tape to hold them onto there, and then they just have quick release clips. Um, so you've done that to give more immersion to feel like you're actually in like you know the GT3 racing cockpit. Now to actually buy the actual proper ones, you know, uh, for, for for actual GT3 cars and stuff, you know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds just for one. Now obviously they're only for show. They're only just just to give you that immersion. So all I did was is I went and bought a um, a ratchet set, two of them from B&Q, cut the ratchets off, and then this material is like a, a, a seat belt material, which is very 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 similar. To the sort of nettings that you find, and then obviously I stapled them all on. <laughs> Not very neat, but it was my first go. Yeah. Um, but they're the but, aren't they correct off these? Yeah. So what I did was I actually went onto the FIA website and downloaded the specs for GT3 driver safety net, and I actually measured it all out and laid it all out on the kitchen floor, measured it all out, put them all together, and they actually fit perfectly. So they come mm. right from the driver's eye height there, and then it's shoulder and waist to go down. And when you sit in the cockpit, they sort of stretch back, and it holds it nice and tight. Um, and then obviously because the seat is not, a, you know, again, it's the, the, seat, the seat and the rig all came together for about 130 quid from Halford, so you can't expect it to be too good, right? So, so obviously if you've got like a proper um, fiberglass seat or, you know, like a proper racing seat, you can attach these where they're supposed to be. But I basically have to use um, quite large Velcro straps and then more gaffer tape to hold them on to keep them strapped into the driver's seat. And then like I said, as you sit in the seat and you sit back, they pull taut. And then you just get the sensation of being in the cockpit a bit more, you know? Like again, like I said, this was my first attempt to at doing that. So I would probably do it slightly differently. And if I had a proper rig, you could actually anchor those to a point on the rig with proper, you know, like with a screw or whatever, 
like I've just literally got them on hook and bungeed them to the back of the monitors. Yeah, we can see the bungees yeah, on the back here. <laughs> so I've literally just bungeed it to try and, and they just go it. through and yeah. hold it. Like I said, this is all very DIY. <laughs> It was just ideas that sort of... So then talking about, Ed, you've got these, we'll just show you the pedals because I'm around here. We're talking They're about the CSL Fantec. light pedals. So, so you I, were running, what were you running before? Because we... Uh, the Logitech G923, which was basically the steering wheel and the pedals. But which, that was a belt drive, which, wasn't it? It was a belt drive, it was true force, but it was all right. See, the, the problem with that is, is that is that the G923 um, was only producing about 1.8 newton meters of force on driving. Now, real GT3 cars go up to about 20, 25, obviously. Obviously, steering wheels and pedals start to get quite expensive, um, as any of you will find when you start doing this. Um, these, this is the, this is actually the new bundle from Fanatec, which is the CSL Lite. This is the V2 steering wheel and the light pedals that came with it. Um, it was about 350 quid, 400 quid, something like that. Did it come from um, the Europe? Was it? But it came from Europe, yeah, yeah, direct from Fanatec. Um, it was only released, I think, sort of, uh, I think it was September, October last year, something like that, and then they ran out of stock. And then it's only just come back into stock sort of April, April, May time. So I managed to get myself some. And you bought that directly off their site? I bought yeah. that directly yeah. from them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't something you can find on Amazon or anything like that. Obviously well, you can definitely find not now at the moment, is it? No, 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 you won't find that. Um, but the good thing is, is well, this actually came as a five Newton meter um, uh, force uh, with the power pack. Um, but I actually bought the boost kit, which is called the boost kit 180, which takes up to eight Newton meters. Of, of force feedback. Now, when we first installed this, we were running it at 100%, and you literally felt like it was going to pull your arms off. Obviously, or the rig apart. <laughs> obviously, or pull the rig apart, because the yeah. rig isn't solid at all, really. Not really. It isn't made for this. Hence the cork underneath the motor, because the yeah. motor weighs an absolute ton. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I really do need to upgrade the rig. Um, but yeah, it produces eight newtons, uh, newton meters of force, which is actually quite good. Now, I know now you can, get, you can go up to like 20 and stuff. They've they got some crazy ones going on at the moment. Um, but that was already feeling like it was a little bit too much. I mean, we were only coming from the G923, so you can tell the difference, but you really can feel the car fighting you, especially if you're trying to accelerate and turn at the same time, you can really feel They're the really good. You, you, yeah, you can feel like the, the tires on, on the tarmac. It's very, 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 very cool. Um, at the top of the steering wheel, there is actually a little readout there, which come is... Not come this side of you, Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's the top of that steering wheel. It's properly in here now. The top of the steering wheel, um, there's actually uh, the readout there. You can see the red LEDs. It's an eight segment display. There's like three of them. It's probably um, flashing here, guys, for you, but yeah, it's stable here. Yeah, all that is is, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so that, that at the moment is set to um, your miles per hour, kilometers per hour. I think you can change that actually to um, display gears and you can change different bits and pieces on it. And at the top there, there's like a little LED which actually changes colors like a rev strip, but a very, very simple one, because obviously it's, it's a very entry level direct drive steering wheel. Um, and it just, it changes color as you go through the gears and then it flashes when it's time to change gear, which is actually quite nice to have a little cue point. Cause I don't actually have, that was something that I wanted to get is an actual rev strip, which then flashes just to have more sort of um, LEDs in the cockpit. Because what is always very cool when you're doing these rigs as well, is you can have all the graphics and all everything looking amazing, but to have actual physical components within the cockpit just completely changes it. It's like oh, a game changer. Yeah, I mean, last you know? time I saw this, Ed, you didn't even have these roll cage. No. Can you just explain how you did these? Because this was quite a simple and cheap way of really bringing cheap. immersion inside when you're yeah, racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, all this is, this is just 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 35 mil white waste pipe that I went to Wix and bought. Um, the reason why I went for the 35 mil waste pipe is because the real, uh, they're about uh, an inch and a half is what the actual roll cages are in the GT3 cars. So that gives you pretty much exactly the same sort of diameter. Um, and then all I did was, is I, I just got the two bits of tube, I put a, a 90 degree bend on the one in the corner there, and then I actually had to gaffer tape that one on, I actually cut like a V out of it, and then gaffer taped it at an angle, so I actually, so when you're sitting inside the car, obviously, with your view being where your driver's head is, um, you don't see where this stops, so it feels like it's going over the top of the driver. Um, so it just gives you the feeling of being inside the cockpit more, like I said, and it was, you know, the whole thing cost me about, you know, tenner or something. You know? mm -hmm. And for, for that level of immersion, it's worth every penny, isn't it? And then I actually added these foam head protectors because, again, I was looking at, at the GT3 um, cars on YouTube, the real ones, and they've actually got these head protectors for the drivers. So I thought, why not actually put it in there? Mm. <laughs> just to give it, again, these cost me about three quid. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they really do make just, a difference. Just to make a massive, massive, a very cheap way of doing it, because everything's expensive. Sorry, one thing I forgot to mention was these, which actually do these side nettings. Like I said, if you wanted to buy actual real ones, you know, you're looking at hundreds and hundreds just for one. 
Um, the ratchet, I think they were about seven quid each, these ratchets, you know? And then I bought the bungee set and that, so the whole thing cost me less than 20 quid. Yeah. To add that, you know? And then I'd probably do them a little bit different next time, maybe. They're, oh, it's just a quick knock up, but it, it actually works really well, I think. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Definitely makes it look good. Yeah. Also bought this sort of neck support here because, again, the seat is, you know, cheap as chips. This is like nothing. So obviously there's no neck support, no head support. So I literally just bought that on eBay, which was about eight quid. And it's just a little neck support. When you sit there, obviously you can, you know, you, you feel like you're sort of more secure. And then a lumbar support down there, because obviously the seat again. Yeah, know, I mean, that really makes that. a difference because we felt that we were oh. kind of hunched back a bit in it. No, oh, it was brutal. It and was then the brutal. last thing you've got here, Ed, is these little fans, isn't it? We put, oh, yeah, we put so, these on. <laughs> that's for the driver, so that's aircon yeah. for the driver. Either yeah. aircon or you yeah. can turn them up and down. <laughs> so when you're going faster, you can actually move them so it feels like there's wind. You, you can have, yeah, yeah. I mean, they probably could be. I mean, a, a lot of people actually have um, the wind, the simulated wind, which is actually runs through sim hub and then it actually gives you you know the sensation as you get faster the wind gets higher but the reason why i put these in here is because it gets damn hot sitting mm. in there and these are just connected to the pc via a usb hub because obviously i've only got so many usb connections on the back of this pc and everything's connected by usb um so i basically just connected two of these fans again gaffer taped them to the side <laughs> i must have gone through about 20 rolls of gaffer <laughs> yeah literally um gaffer taped them to the side of the monitors um, and then they've just got three speeds and there's just a little button here it, it, Yeah, and it, it just blows in and it just blows air into the driver and It's good because you need that it get, it's just it just gets really hot. It gets too hot in there I've also connected an external fan to the back of the PC just to give it a bit more Yeah, you can see that down here airflow as well You can see it maybe yeah. just as dark down yeah, there see. and we've also today. We just run this machine actually and we're just running what we're running one monitor off this and, and the, surround the surround sound system just to give this a test yeah um so we've been running it for what about yeah. three hours yeah about three hours now. so we've still got what's it left now 7.2 hours yeah the idea would be trying to run this rig in the future basically guys um off grid yeah you, know, you can actually plug extra batteries to this uh, there's three power points in there yeah and hopefully at some point you know it's a good brand they seem to be really good reliable it's built well and hopefully, you never know, we might be able to put, run this whole bad boy yeah. uh, off grid. Yeah, there's also um, just one other thing, um, I, if you notice, the, the flag spotters, which are. Well, I think you should jump in in a minute. Down. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, so you've got the flag spotters either side. Um, and they basically um, they do the flags and the spotters. So any flags that you get in the car, yellow flag, green flag, you know, whatever. But you have to run that through SIM card, don't you? Just so yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, and it does the spotters. So as you go past the car, say car on the left, car on the right, and it will just indicate which side the car's on so it just gives you another visual reference but again it's it's more physical stuff within the cockpit rather than being graphics within the game and it just brings the whole thing alive mm. because then you feel like you're actually in the car yeah um, but yeah yeah so no 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 good good point um those run through sim hub um so basically sim hub control that and send send all the details to it um also <laughs> yeah obviously the so what runs through sim hub here just so people know so it's the the spotters. So it's basically the flags, the flag lights, yeah. and the spotters. Yep. Um, and also, which we haven't spoken about, is the base shakers. Oh yeah, you've installed yeah, base shakers. I've installed base shakers. But they would well. only work again, won't they, through SimHub? Sim you can't again. just plug them in and not. No. You need to get a SimHub yeah. with ACC yeah. and integrate yeah. it all yeah. that way. So basically, I bought the 35 watt ones, uh, Dayton ones, um, and I've got one either side of the chair. Again, if you've got a proper cockpit aluminium one. You can actually mount them. You can put four, five, six, seven. You can have it all four corners of the car. You can have it doing all different tires. You can do it whatever you want to do with it. But obviously the only solid bit of the rig that I've got is the bottom of the chair. So I literally just drilled holes and just actually screwed and bolted them to it. And then you have to buy, I bought a little um, amp. Um, and then you just literally run the two speaker wires out. If anyone's done any um, sort of car upgrade audio, you know, you put subs in and bits and bobs in your car. It's a very similar thing. It's just a very small amp that just runs both of those speakers. But again, they're connected by USB to the PC, which is connected to SimHub. And then SimHub sends all the telematics and all the data to it. And I've got it set up to do the engine harmonics, parametric sound. Um, I've got it to do gear change, so you get a jolt when, 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 when you change through the gears. And also the road texture, so you feel the texture of the road and you get like the curbs, for the curbs on the left, curbs on the right. But they're, they're quite powerful at 35 watt each. Um, and the, the lit lamp is, is, it will do 100 watt max. So I've got that set to about uh, 10 o'clock, if you know what I mean, uh, volume wise. And then you can then adjust all the volumes within SimHub. And 
if you want an ice cream. Yeah. Now's the time. Now's the time <laughs> to go and get your ice creams. <laughs> Good time, mate. Thanks. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, lovely. We'll have two up here, two yeah. 99p flakes yeah, you know that, are about, one, that are about eight quid each yeah. now, not 99p. <laughs> yeah. So, Ed, do you want to jump right. in and just maybe just give us a little... Um, yeah, I can, well, I can show you. Hold on, but... So, so that just done this clips there, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it is literally like trying to get into a bloody GT3. Before. Yeah, so this will be a laugh. Yeah. This, here we go. This is Let's watch him get in. <laughs> not too bad that time. Oh. And we better plug him back in here with the old, because uh, you will notice, guys, we did a video just before this one, oh. and we've actually forgotten to to oh, plug him yeah. in. Yeah. So, so maybe if you just restart a race, Ed, and we can just see it all yeah. sort of running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, you get an idea. You'll get it. an idea on how it's sort of, you can see it in our last video, obviously, but this is just because we've been talking about oh. it. it. Just gives you that. I mean, you, you can, can see the light now. You can see it on Ed's hands, on his face. Yeah. Restart. Now you'll see yeah, you see spotters. that light all change there. And you'll see all the spots. What I'll do is, Ed, I'll, I'll turn this light off in the room here for yeah, a second. Yeah, Which yeah. one is it on the? Yeah, all of them, all three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here we go. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. So definitely to, but now to show, show how the these lights, these lights here work. Show the lights working. And this is all again. Is that through Sim Hub? The lights? Uh, no. The lights is basically through the, the Philips Hue, um, the Philips Hue app. But it's very simple. You don't need anything else. You just need the Philips Hue bridge, yeah, which connects to your Wi-Fi wireless, and then they connect wirelessly to the bridge. And then, like I said, the, this light here takes everything from this monitor in the centre, where well, you see it there. That was brilliant, yeah. The left one there takes from the left side, and then this one does sort of the, the middle here. So you get a kind of surround effect. But you'll see it now, look. And you'll see, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we actually. There you go, you see that change there, guys? Yeah, and you see that's brighter because that's where the daylight is, reflecting off of this concrete block here. That's where that's, that's coming from. Yeah. Oh, what's happening there? Oh, the steering wheel's gone. I had the steering wheel, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I had> the, <laughs> the steering wheel was around the other way because I was playing with it. Yeah. <laughs> but look, now you can see the speed. Yeah, you can see it on there. There's the spotter telling you car on the left. The car on the left. But now you'll see for green flag when it starts. But you'll see what I mean about the immersion of having actual physical elements within the cockpit rather than it just being graphics. Yeah. Yeah, as in you've got these um, side nettings, you've got all the flags in there that are graphics, they're physical. It's a green flag for go, go, go. And you can just sort of feel how, obviously, yeah. The force feedback, you can probably see my arms moving. It's fighting me here. Can you see the lighting as well, though, coming across him? You should have car flag lights. There you go. Let's car to his right, flashing to the right. Oh. So, I mean, amazing build, really. Yeah, like I said, my next one will be definitely even better. There's certain things you want to tweak and stuff, isn't there? Well, I, I just I, I want to have a solid, solid rig because, like I said, I've made these pedals and this steering wheel as solid as I can, but the, the it's just not made for it. That, that cheap rig was, it, like I said, it's made for sort of cheap Logitech gear, probably playing, you know, PlayStation games in your lounge in front of your TV. Which is absolutely fine, but Which that's fine. A, different, a completely different yeah. sort of rig. It's made more yeah. for that, whereas if you're going to do this seriously, or want to start, yeah. Yeah, and want to do it and actually have it, you know, as real as you can get it. So what would you say, Ed, how much this whole system sort of cost you roughly, sort of? So the guts are five grand. So for 5,000 pounds, guys, you can get a rig that really does feel, Yeah. you know, there's certain bits if you don't, you don't want them, you don't have to have them. No. But what Ed's talked about today, yeah, you're talking about, you know, sort of 5,000, but you've been, you've been building this for what, since about, oh, um, God. 2000 and, 21? Yeah. Did it start with the first video you probably see on my channel? When we had it literally just in the centre of the room here, we just had yeah. 